This is the beer keg rocket stove, the coolest rocket stove on YouTube. I'm going to show you how to make this rocket stove and then we're going to take it outside and do some performance tests with the infrared temperature gun. Let's get going. Okay, recently I had a football party at my house and uh, we were left over at the end with a couple of these 5 liter beer kegs. And I got thinking I didn't want to throw these beer kegs away. So I decided I've been wanting to make a rocket stove for a while and this beer keg is going to be perfect for that. So today we're going to make a rocket stove. The materials you're going to need to make this rocket stove are the 5 liter beer keg I was just talking about that inspired this project. Three soup cans. These are just standard sized soup cans that you get chili, mushroom soup, anything like that. You're also going to need a couple bags of this mortar mix. Uh, you could get one 35 pound bag of standard concrete if you wanted. I'm choosing to use mortar mix just because it's going to be easier to work with on my bench. And then you're going to need some tape so you can tape the cans up and uh, get everything set before you pour the concrete. In this design, the cans are just for the, the, the cans are just formwork for the actual cavities that are going to be inside the rocket stove. The concrete is going to be the structure for this uh, stove. It's going to be a little on the heavy side. But uh, this is going to be a really fun project, I think. To make this rocket stove, you're going to need a few basic tools. The best tool you could probably use is uh, tin snips for cutting the uh, various pieces of sheet metal. If you don't have tin snips, some options are a Dremel tool. And uh, you might be able to get away with a can opener if you're uh, exceptionally good. Um, most likely, you're going to need something more than a can opener. I highly recommend 10 snips if you don't already have a pair that come in handy all the time. Just grab a five to ten dollar pair from your local hardware store. Definitely a good tool to have in your tool kit. Once you have your 10 snip, um, some pliers is handy for uh, doing some folding of the uh, metal pieces without cutting yourself. A marker for um, marking where you want to make your cuts. You're also going to want some wire to make the handle of your rocket stove when you're done a tape measure for some basic measurements and a container that mix the concrete in. I'm going to be using a five gallon bucket. Uh, you can use whatever you want. A five gallon bucket works well for me. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is cut open this five liter beer keg. To do this, I'm going to use the Dremel tool and we're going to cut along the inside here and remove the top of the beer keg. I want to leave this lip up here to keep the lip or uh, top of this beer keg nice and sturdy. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this clamped in my uh, bench vise over here. In case you guys have ever wondered, this is what it looks like inside of one of these beer kegs. I've never looked inside one of these before, but uh, got some kind of pressurized container. It actually looks kind of like a CO2 can with a plastic nozzle on the tip. Huh, kind of interesting. Might have to open that up again later. Okay, so now that we have the lid removed from our 5 liter beer keg, we're going to go ahead and make our connection onto the elbows or the two cans that will form the elbow, and then make the entry hole into the 5 liter beer keg. Okay, so to make a circular cut on the outside of the can, what I like to do is uh, lay a few pieces of painter's tape out and uh, trace around the bottom of the can, and then cut out the circle. And then when that circle's cut out, you can stick it to the side of the can, and that's your cutout. And I'll get you very close. Won't be exact because of the curvature of the can, but I'll get you really close to the um, overall hole size or shape that you need to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out real quick and we'll stick it on the can. So I'm going to pull the circle off the bench here and then I'm going to stick it onto the can so the top of the circle is touching the top ridge uh, right there on my soup can. And that will leave you a little bit of extra material at the bottom and that will just make the whole thing a little bit more rigid when you're all done. I'm going to take the pen and I'm going to trace around my my sticker I've created just in case it falls off as I'm cutting. I'll have 
All right, now that I have my outline drawn on the can, I'm gonna go ahead and punch a hole in the center of this and start cutting with the tin snips. I'm gonna speed this part of the video up because it might take me a little bit. Alrighty, once you get a hole cut into the side of uh, one of your soup cans, the size of another soup can, go ahead and take a can opener and cut the bottom off of the second soup can, so it's a tube. And what you want to do is you want to fit these into each other so the inlet soup can is just barely completely in there. So you're going to have a little crack almost on the uh, lip here. So you might have to squeeze the can a little bit to get it in there completely. But you want to have as much of the inlet sticking out as possible. Once you have that done, I've already done this, but draw a black line along the inlet can. And what that will do is you can pull it out and then you can put some cuts in here. And we're going to fold those pieces up to maximize airflow going up the chimney. And this will make your rocket stove more efficient. Once you have your inlet can pulled back out, go ahead and take a pair of 10 snips and make three to four cuts horizontally to up to the black line. Don't go past your black line. Okay, so it took me, took me a couple extra cuts there. So once you have the cuts into your inlet can, go ahead and reinsert it into your base chimney can like we had it previously, like we had it previously. Once you have the can positioned correctly, go ahead and fold these pieces of metal up with a pair of pliers. This is what it should look like on the inside of the chimney once you get the inlet can lips folded up. As you can see, you have almost a perfectly circular column of air going upward, and this will make for a very good airflow. Now it's time to install this elbow into the five liter beer keg. Once you have your inlet elbow made, go ahead and take another soup can and cut the top and bottom off like this. You'll have another tube that fits on top of your chimney column. To correctly locate the hole on the beer keg for your inlet can, you will need to get your third can, which forms the second half of your chimney. Attach the two chimney cans and flip the assembly upside down and then turn the beer keg upside down. With both assemblies upside down, you can see where the inlet can will touch the beer keg. This is where we want to make our hole so that both the chimney and the beer keg are level with each other at the top. The added benefit of this is you'll also have some extra concrete at the bottom of your beer, beer keg when you're done. This will provide extra insulation to protect the surface that your rocket stove is sitting on. It will also make the rocket stove a little bottom heavy to help prevent it from being tipped over. Use the tape template that you used previously to cut the hole in your chimney can and locate it on the beer can so your elevation is where it needs to be. Right about there. Use a pen that mark the outline of your template. Go ahead and remove the template once your line has been drawn. And then punch a hole in the center so you can get your tin snips in. Once your hole is in the center, you can get the tin snips to start cutting. Once you have the hole in the keg cut at the correct elevation, go ahead and test install the elbow that you made previously. Everything seems to fit correctly. It's uh, nothing is binding or catching. And as you can see, the inlet tube has plenty of length to position the chimney in the center of the keg. I'm going to go ahead and attach the secondary can to the inlet elbow. And then we'll prepare, then we'll prepare this assembly for concrete. 
To complete the interior of your rocket stove, take your third can and cut the top and bottom off. Then place it on top of your previously made inlet elbow and tape it together. Also place some tape on both sides of your inlet can to help hold everything in place and keep concrete from leaking in. Once you have the inside of your rocket stove sealed up with tape, go ahead and install it into the beer cake. Like so. To correctly position the chimney, first center the top of the chimney with the top of the keg. Tape it into place and then move the intake in and out until the bottom of the chimney is centered within the bottom of the keg. Then tape that into place. Then we'll pour concrete. So once you get everything taped up and the uh, chimney inlet assembly locked in place, you should have something that looks like this. You can see the chimney is reasonably centered up and the inlet's nice and secure. And I put more tape on here than you probably need to, but I was really trying to seal up any cracks to keep the concrete from leaking out. All this tape will come off in the end and it should look pretty good, but uh, I didn't want to take any chances and get halfway through and have an issue. You can see down in there you have a nice clear pathway for the uh, uptake, for the uh, air coming out. And in here you have a nice wide opening. So, go ahead and grab a bag or two of concrete and uh, let's get going. Alright, so once you get your concrete mixed, go ahead and start adding it evenly around the chimney here. And make sure you're getting it underneath the chimney as well. You don't want an air pocket under there when this thing is all uh, cured up. So use a a trowel or a gardening shovel or whatever you use to mix your uh, cement up. And start adding it in. While I was waiting for the concrete on the rocket stove to cure, I went ahead and took a six inch piece of uh, two by four and split it up into a bunch of smaller pieces. And I also took some cardboard and put, cut into some small strips as fire starters. This should be more than enough fuel for one or two burns on my rocket stove. Here's the rocket stove after it's cured overnight. Uh, I think it turned out really well. You have a very solid rocket stove that's a little bottom heavy so it's not going to tip over very easily. The um, interior of the rocket stove is nice and clear as you can see. There's no obstructions. This should be a very good, efficient rocket stove. Now, depending on what you're using this stove for, uh, you might need a few small accessories. These are optional, but uh, I cho chose to add them so you can see how they work. If you're gonna be putting a pot on the top of your rocket stove, you're gonna need a pot holder or grate of some kind. I went ahead and just made this little cheesy pot holder out of some scrap steel laying around my shop. Basically, it's a uh, cross shape with some slits around the edges to allow the pot holder to sit on the edge of the the pot holder has some slits around the edges in order to sit on the edge of this can without moving around another option for your rocket stove is a shelf to put your fuel on in the air intake I just made this out of a uh, piece of soup can that I pounded flat and I cut some slits in the side of the air intake tube. This will allow me to put the fuel above the incoming air and as the air goes in it will lick the tips of the fuel as it goes up the chimney causing a more robust and efficient flame and you can just continue to push the fuel in through the top. This is an optional feature but I think after you put this much effort into making a rocket stove, you might as well add the little things to make it more efficient. This is what the completed rocket stove looks like. It's ready to go, so I'm going to take it outside and we're going to test this thing out. 
here we are outside. What we're going to do is we are going to put some wood and cardboard into the stove, light it, and when it stops smoking we're going to put 16 ounces of water on top of the stove and see how long it takes to boil. Just so you guys know, it's uh, pretty chilly out here today. About 29 degrees. And the stove itself it's about 40 degrees because it's been sitting inside and it's cooled off a little since it's come out. So then that's about the same temperature as the water. The water says 33, but that's on a shiny metal surface, so it's not going to be quite as accurate. Uh, I'm just going to be a little bit low on a shiny metal surface. So it's pretty cold out here. Let's see how long it takes to boil this water. Now you can see some flame coming out of the top. The rocket stove is really starting to warm up now. So that's what the side of the rocket stove, the temperature is. About 56. And then in the actual flame area, the temperature is about 361. The intake Oops. The intake air is about 65 degrees, which is good. It means it's getting nice cool air. All right, now that the stove is burning nice and hot, we got uh, over 600 degrees inside there. I'm going to go ahead and put the 16 ounces of water on and start boiling. Well over 400 right at the base of the chamber there. So the water is just at boiling point. It isn't quite boiling, but uh, I'm just about out of fuel, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Um, the rock stove did work. I think I'm gonna do a couple little changes in the future. I think uh, my uh, pot standoff may have been, I think my pot standoff may have been just a little bit too tall away from the heat source. And uh, I might try some different types of fuel to see if I can't get some better results in the future. One thing I did do is I took out the, uh, fuel shelf that I had put in earlier. I um, wanted to get some more fuel in there and I found airflow was not a problem with this design. So I went ahead and pulled out that fuel shelf and um, I think that helped me get to the near boiling point here. It's very cold outside. It's a little bit below freezing. So um, I think this rocket stove is a success. I'll make some uh, future updates um, as I change the design and we're going to compare this rocket stove to some store available options such as the pocket rocket and um, some other options like the Kelly kettle and whatnot and see how it performs compared to something you might pay for and what the pros and cons are between the different options. Thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you in a future video.